Yes. Motion carries 8-0. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next item on the administrative agenda, assignment and relocatable, relocatable classrooms. Mr. Lubley and Mr. Rogers. This is a um, action item. Um, the report was given at the last meeting, so if my colleagues have questions um, for follow-up before we take action on this, um, please raise your hand. Ms. Mallow? Uh, wrong, I was on the wrong agenda item. Ms. Delmont Small? Great, hello. Hi. Okay, so I went through Thank you very much for the information. Um, Talbot Springs Elementary School, in addition to the five unit module, they also have portables number 189, 188, and 216.5, maybe that's the five module one, that are able to be moved. Why are we only moving the one modular structure when we have needs throughout the system for additional relocatables? The, according to the information that we were working with from uh, the facilities office, the ones that we're recommending to move are the ones that are able to be moved, and that's the five classroom unit, and I believe um, two of the singles. Okay, because I went through and I double checked mm -hmm. that those three that I'm, so those three are all the ones that are being moved then, or we're just moving From one Springs. single? So, but we're leaving one that still can be moved, because I went to the same list you did to mm -hmm. make sure. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, could we add that and give it to one of the schools that's requested a relocatable that we haven't been able to provide to them? We can reconfirm uh, the list with our building maintenance department. When we initially checked with them, they indicated that the five classroom modular and the two portables that are up front of the school out by Whiteacre Road were of the age and condition to be moved. The three in the back were older and were not recommended to be moved, but we can follow up with them specifically on those to see if they do feel like they could be reutilized at this point. That would be great because again, if we can give some additional capacity elsewhere, I think it would be appreciated. Understood. The other question that I have is with regard to the different programs that we have throughout the system. And this is not for now, this is for Dr. Martirano. Um, the board really doesn't, we don't holistically see the impact of the different programs and where they're placed throughout the system. I think that this is a conversation that the board needs to have in public with staff to get an understanding and what the plan is and how we make the decisions as to where these different programs are located because I think it, would, it will help inform us as we go to the, through the redistricting process as well as we deal with the capacity issues throughout the school system and also advocate for additional funds from our funding authorities. My, my reaction is yes, um, we can do that and that's, we'll, we'll define more information because we do contain some of that on page three of the attachment two, if I'm following correctly, based upon the programmatic needs and s some additional support. So there, there is a deliberative process where those programs go and how we make those decisions. I have no problem bringing that forward to the board. Okay, because if you do have sort of the criteria used and how it was done, if you could provide that to us, I think it would help okay. inform us because this is something I think that we, even though it, it impacts school, the school planning office, it's really on the programmatic side. Exactly. I think that we need to be better informed of that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Centennial Lane asked for one of their portables to be replaced because it's um, in, um, disrepair one of their portables and I think we just got um, an update on on that portable any thoughts to replacing um, the portable at Centennial Lane because I know that we're not spending a lot on relocatables but just um, some of these problematic um, relocatables mm -hmm. um, yeah the uh, the request from Centennial Lane was relayed on to our facilities okay. department and I to my understanding that they're reviewing that and for inclusion on their summer work list okay um, thank you, um, and thank you for providing the um, requ principal request list because it, it does provide a, a bigger picture. Because um, there's a lot of there's a lot of requests, <laughs> right. and, and I understand that it's 
difficult right now to project enrollment mm -hmm. and the challenges, is, and we don't want to overbuy. On mm -hmm. we, that's the last thing we want to do. So I appreciate the challenges that you're facing. That being said, um, Long Reach um, has asked for relocatables, mm -hmm. and they're one of the few schools that actually had we have actual enrollment exceeding the projected. Mm -hmm. One of the few schools. So I always look at that as like a guide, like that's a school that's going to have, uh, you know, going to meet the enrollment projections at least. Right. Um, and Howard asked for uh, a portable or two, I don't know how many, to be removed. Any thoughts? Can those portables be moved from Howard? Are they in, have they already been moved so they can't be moved so that we can provide some um, relief to Longreach? What we'd like to do with those high schools specifically, uh, as well as others that might be impacted by the boundary review this summer, okay. is, is hold off and, hold and see how they're impacted by those boundary changes and then make a decision on portables following okay. that. Understood. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, and I think I had one more. Guilford, they asked for two, two relocatables. Um, and that school has a, a, it's one of our high farms rates and have yes. lots of pull out services and, and such. Any um, thoughts to why, get, when, a, when a school asks for two portables, I. I yeah. So at, at Guilford, we um, were able to give them, I believe, two additional portables uh, recently. Okay. And so I think that's a case where with the, if you, on attachment two, you can see the estimated utilization, including okay. the portables, is 86%. Okay. Um, so I think that, that doesn't place them at the top of the, the priority list in terms of utilization. Um, and we need to further evaluate, the, evaluate that site to make sure that additional portables could also, could could fit there. Okay, that makes sense. So you, they were recently given? Yes. Okay, capacity, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Mallow. If, when we approve this, will this um, expend the expected budget for relocatables for fiscal 23? It will not, no. In fiscal year 23 capital budget right now, we have requested $2 million. That was initially put together with the idea of relocating the 12 classroom modular that's currently at Hammond. Since the um, creation of the capital budget, the planning for Hammond has been altered to utilize the 12 classroom modular for another year so that the bus loop can be completed a year early. So it is remaining at Hammond. Um, the plan would be that that funding remains in the capital budget line so that next year that modular could be utilized. But the, this current program would not utilize that entire $2 million. So is there a possibility that if there is a dramatic change in a school's enrollment that we would have the funds to try to obtain a mid-year portable or no? There could be a possibility that could be reviewed. I do want to note that right now, the last indication that we received is that there's approximately a five to six month wait time on actually receiving portables. So at this point, there would not be an opportunity to receive a portable for the start of school, but at mid-year, there, there could be a possibility that could be reviewed. Okay, and with a six month wait time, does that even give us enough time to get them well, are we buying any right now or just relocating everything? Just relocating at this point. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the supply chain issues. Correct. Correct. Fantastic. Okay, uh, with that, I'll move approval of the recommendations for the installation of relocatable units for the school year 22-23. Kim. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Mallow and a second by Ms. Watts to move approval of the recommendations for installation of relocatable units for the school year 2022-2023. Ms. Delmont Small? Yes. Dr. Liu? Yes. Ms. Mallow? Yes. Mr. Banez? Yes. Ms. Mosley? Yes. Ms. Watts? Yes. Dr. Wu? Yes. Ms. Catronio? Yes. Motion carries 8-0. Thank you. And just a request that this principal requesting could be part of the report. Um, I think it, it really helps okay. fra in, in framing the, you know, the rationale and why and, and, and you know, it, it just gives a bigger picture. So not a problem. Thank you. Thank you.